Welcome to the next amazing project in the DevOps series. The name of this project is Continuous Delivery on AWS. Yes, everything will be on AWS. And no, we are not going to use EC2 instances here. We're going to use AWS PaaS and SaaS services. So when should you do such kind of project? What is the requirement? Let's understand those things first. Okay, so let's say there is a product development team and uh, working in an agile environment and they're going to make a regular code changes to build the product. Now, let's say that this developer team are uh, running short on operations. They don't have much or they don't have system admins or cloud engineers, but they are making regular code changes and these codes changes needs to be built, tested and needs to be deployed. And for deployment, you really need operations team there. So regular code changes means regular packaging of the software and then regular deployment on the servers. And after deployments, you need to conduct further testing like software testing, integration testing. Now, I think you should have already understood the problem, but let's still talk about it. Okay, so we're talking about today's age developer. They're fast, they're quick, they're gonna make continuous code changes, right? And if the code deployment process is manual, it will be time consuming. Plus developers, testers here are not equipped with the ops knowledge. We don't have operations team or we have a very less operations team. But anyways, these things needs to be done. So what can they do? Well, they can hire some professionals, right? Operational professionals, system admins, cloud engineers, or even outsource, right? Uh, we have to understand here, even if they hire or outsource, there's a dependency set. If there are a CI CD server set like Jenkins, Nexus, SonarCube, there'll be regular maintenance of it. If the target are servers or even EC2 instances, you'll have all the overhead of managing managing you know the target machines also i'm talking about dev and test environment not production environment so developers are going to make regular code changes which needs to be tested deployed on servers right and then tested more further like software testing and then it can be promoted to production so the release management will also need a lot of help of operations team so what do they do Well, instead of depending on operations team, they can use platform as a service or a software as a service provided by cloud. Like AWS has many such services where you don't need to manage virtual machines, EC2 instance, network, storage. So you don't need to manage all those things. So you don't need really operations team to manage those. Developers or testers with little bit of knowledge on the cloud can use those services. And moreover, we're talking about pre-prod environment, which are, you know, and we can have a disposable environment. So once you have disposable environments, you can set a CI CD pipeline, which can automatically deploy the software and its feature, any changes to this, this, to these disposable environments. Once it is tested or once your release management is completed, you can just, you know, delete those environments. You don't need to continuously manage them. Okay. So make a code change, build it, test it, deploy it, then again test it. You do it for every commit and you're going to use uh, the developers and testers. These people are going to use PaaS and SaaS services provided by cloud. So for such kind of projects, we can set up continuous delivery process on cloud. So once these developers have continuous delivery pipeline on the cloud, they can repair any issues very quickly. So short MTTR, it goes very well with the agile process. All right, so it will be quick. Like as soon as the code is changed, continuously the process runs and gives you the result. No human intervention over there and no operation team intervention also there. Any fault can be isolated quickly again. And uh, we are talking about CICD pipeline on cloud by using cloud CICD services. So no operations team intervention again. So if you see, we are automating plus we are also removing dependencies here. 
Okay, now let's see what all the services, the AWS services that we're going to use to set up this continuous delivery pipeline. Okay, starting with code commit. So code commit is going to be our version control system. Code artifact where we're going to store dependency of Maven. So Maven will download all the dependency from code artifact service. Code build service, we're going to use this service for multiple things. One, to build our artifact, of course, to run sonar scanner, to run code analysis, also to run software testing. Okay, so you have different platforms also in code build, Linux platform, Windows platform, so you can execute different kinds of jobs. Then we're going to use code deploy service. This service is also multipurpose. We can use it to deploy our artifact to various things like we can store it on S3 bucket. We can deploy it on a Beanstalk environment. We can deploy it on EC2 instances. So in our project, we are going to deploy it on Beanstalk environment. Okay, more AWS services. So Sonar Cloud, we're going to use uh, to do code analysis. Now this is not from AWS. This is gonna be separate service altogether. So we are going to sign up to Sonar Cloud, create an account. So it's Sonar Cube on the cloud, Sonar Cube server on the cloud like that. Check style, we're gonna run it through code build. Selenium software testing, we're gonna, we going to run through code build service. So the place we're going to deploy is going to be Beanstack, which is going to host our application. RDS we're going to use for the database and code pipeline finally to connect all these things together. So you see, we are not using any EC2 instance. We're not gonna deploy our artifact to any EC2 instance. We're going to deploy it on Beanstack, which is also going to use RDS for database. So platform as a service for application hosting and also for database. So whatever we do, we have to remember our objective or to keep our object in our mind, our goals. We need no or very low or less operations overhead. Short MTTR, we need fast turnaround time. So all the automation, we are doing it for that. So, you know, we can, we can quickly do changes whenever there is a requirement. And if there is any issue, any bug, we can resolve it very quickly. And less disruptive, of course. So if you have done our previous CI CD project on Jenkins and Sonar and all, uh, I would like to make a quick comparison. So code commit service instead of GitHub, code artifact instead of Nexus Sonar type, code build instead of Jenkins jobs, Sonar cloud instead of Sonar cube server, AWS code pipeline instead of creating a Jenkins pipeline. So these are the comparison. So left hand side are the services that we're going to use in order to have no ops or less operation overhead, the left hand side services, the cloud services. Okay, a few more comparison. Beanstalk instances we're gonna use instead of Tomcat EC2 instances. And we're going to use AWS RDS instead of managing our database on a VM or EC2 instance. All right, it's time to achieve our goals now. But before we go there, architecture of continuous delivery pipeline. Okay, so as we have been discussing so far, developers are going to make regular code changes and they're gonna commit. Okay, once they commit the code, this pipeline gets started, okay, for every commit. So the commit ha is going to happen on AWS code commit service, which is going to then trigger the next job, AWS code build. This job is going to do code analysis, Sonar Cube it's going to use, Sonar Scanner it is going to use, and it needs any dependency, Maven dependency, that will be downloaded from Code Artifact. So we have to set that as well. AWS Code Build Service is going to trigger one more job. This is going to build the artifact, and if this needs any dependency, it is going to download it again from AWS Code Artifact. So these build jobs are actually going to run Maven. Okay, and Maven dependency will be downloaded from Code Artifact. And once the artifact is created, we are going to store it on an S3 bucket. And then we are going to have one more job, deployment job, which is going to deploy our artifact to Beanstalk. So we'll have an AWS Beanstalk environment already ready. 
So code deploy service is going to automatically deploy our artifact to Beanstalk environment and Beanstalk will be also connected with the RDS. So that's the whole flow. Plus we're going to have one more job, which is going to be software testing. We'll execute that also from AWS code build service. So it will come after the deploy. Okay. And finally, let's see the flow of execution. First, we're going to log into AWS account. We're going to go to code commit service and we're going to create a code commit repository. Like we create repository on GitHub. Then we're going to sync it with our local repository. So local Git repository will be synced with code commit repository. Then we'll go to code artifact service and then we're going to create a repository over there where the Maven dependencies will be stored. And we're going to update settings.xml file with this detail of code rep code artifact repository. Palm.xml file also will update with the repository details. And we're going to generate a token. So our Maven can access this code artifact. And this token will be stored in SSM parameter store. Okay, next is going to be the Sonar job setup. So first we're going to create a Sonar cloud account. We're going to generate token and few parameters. And then we're going to store these parameters again in SSM parameter store. Then we're going to create a build project which will run our Maven job to execute Sonar scanner. And before that, we're going to update a code build role which will access this parameter store. So a code build job can access the parameters which we are stored over there. We're going to create notification uh, so we can get notification in for our pipeline, any job. Then we'll create a build project, which is going to uh, build our artifact. So we have few more parameters that we're going to put it in again, parameter store. So basically variables, then we're going to create the build project, which will actually generate the artifact. Then we'll create a pipeline, which will connect all these jobs together and we'll test it by making a code change. So when there is a code change on code commit, then it will trigger this entire pipeline. And we'll see an artifact uploaded in the S3 bucket. So till here, it's continuous integration. We have set up continuous integration. Now we're going to extend more further and we'll be setting up continuous delivery pipeline. So we need an environment where you can deploy our artifact. So we'll be creating Beanstalk and RDS. So Beanstalk where we're going to upload our artifact, RDS for database. We're going to update the RDS security group so it can, so Beanstack instance can access it. We're going to deploy database in RDS. And then we're going to switch our branches from CI AWS to CD hyphen AWS. We're going to use a different branch in this project, CD hyphen AWS. And we're going to update settings.xml file and pom.xml file in this project. And then we're going to create another job, which is going to build artifact again. And the build spec file is going to be different for this one. Okay. And then we're going to create a deploy job, which is going to take our artifact and deploy it to Beanstalk or you can say upload to Beanstalk. Then we will have a job, which is going to run our software testing Selenium scripts and which is going to upload our screenshot and all the output to the S3 bucket. Okay, then we are going to update our pipeline. So we already have code commit job, test code job, build and store job, and we deploy to S3 bucket. We're going to add build and release job, which is going to build the artifact and then deploy to Beanstack. So there'll be a deploy job again. And then we're going to run Selenium test scripts again from a build job and upload all the result to S3 bucket. And then finally we'll test our pipeline. Okay, so let's not wait further and jump to AWS console. Okay, so first we are going to set up continuous integration pipeline. If you have already done this in the previous project, then you can skip and directly go to continuous delivery and continue after that. Or if you need a revision, you can watch it once again. Once we set up a continuous integration pipeline, then we'll extend it to continuous delivery pipeline. So first we'll set this, what you see on the screen right now. And once this is done, and then we are going to set up this. So continuous integration will be extended to continuous delivery pipeline. So let's get started. 